Hello. In this video, I'm going to illustrate how you can create a collector survey where you can integrate data from a map outside of the of the survey. In this way, for instance, one could create a, a survey on that <coughs> in which one collects the land use per plot, but uh, that also incorporates, for instance, the um, the, land, the management of, of, of the area or if the plot is within a, a natural reserve or for instance like in this example what is the type of soil in the plot so we will start by by creating a new survey in the collect survey designer so of course you need to have collect installed in your computer once you you go and collect, you will go to new survey, survey designer, new survey. Here you are going to name your survey, I don't know, whatever you want. So I'm going to call it Spain Spain land use test. Or oh, sorry, land use soil. And now I'm going to choose the collect earth template. Okay, I'm going to leave it in English, the for public group, and click on you. Here the first, thi the first thing I need to do is to change the name of the survey. I put here Spain, soil, and use test. Okay, and now I'm going to also choose that I just want a half a hectare, and that I want only to see the Google Earth Engine app. Um, integration. So if I go to the schema now I see that since we chose to or I chose to create a collector template um, simple survey I have a few attributes already on the survey some of them are also coming from a map which are the elevation the slope and the aspect they, they usually we also usually obtain them through Google Earth Engine, through the SRTM digital, the SRTM digital elevation model. In this survey, for this survey, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to remove them. Um, let me just delete all this data about elevation, slope, and aspect, just to make it a little bit easier for you for you to follow. Okay, there's also some calculated fields that help the user for the analysis to arrange the um, slopes and elevation as ranges. We remove that. Okay, we save this. Okay, if I click on preview, now I have a completely empty survey. All right, this is a land use survey, so I'm going to just make a very fast uh, a new attribute here where we will collect the land use for each one of the plots. So I'm going to make this a code attribute and then call it land, land use, land use, land use 2020. And in the code list, I have this code list, but so I need to create a new code list because this is elevation orientation slope. I need a new code list. I'm going to call it I'm going to add a new list called land use. Oops. Right. And I'm going to just add the codes for the usual IPCC land uses. Forest. Okay, we'll leave it like this, doesn't matter so much, it is just for testing, okay. So if I click on save and preview, we mean we are missing a couple of land uses, but it doesn't matter. Okay, now we have a survey, very simple survey, where you can just click on the land uses, so you can just assess the land use of the plot. But now the point is we want to aggregate data from a map. So for that, I have chosen, there is um, the <coughs> digital soil map worldwide that you can download from the FAO, FAO Geo Network. And I have created a grid over 
the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, Portugal, even part of France and Morocco and Algeria. Okay, so this is a grid that I created with QGIS using the QGIS vector uh, tool. Uh, it's called Geometry Tool. No, what is it? Here. So I created this, this grid using this regular points tool. So this created a grid of plots that are separated half a degree each. Okay. And now I have also open in, in QGIS this uh, shape file that is the, um, the digital soil map worldwide uh, save file that can be downloaded from 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 Geo Network. You can see uh, here, okay, the digital soil map of the world. I will leave this in the in the YouTube comments so you can download it too. Okay, I have downloaded the shape file and I have opened it in QGIS. So if I look, I take a look at the at my grid. I click on the branch table. I see a grid where I have for each plot you have an ID, a latitude, and a longitude. Okay. And what I want to do is that I want to have when I collect the data, I want to see on the on the on the analysis phase, but also as we collect the data, I want to know what is the soil type of that plot. Okay, so we are going to add a new attribute to the survey where we right click on the on the plot, we click on add attribute and then in code. Well first of all let me show you that in the the digital soil map of the world, if I click on the open attribute table, there is for each one of the polygons of the map, or this this is a shape file, you have this dominating dominating soil type. And this is a code, okay, for each one of the, for each one of these uh, polygons within the shape file, okay. So what I want is to include that information on my plot. I want to put that the plots located about this polygon, they have this dominant dominant soil type. Okay, so for that I need to modify the survey and I need to add that information to the survey. So I'm going to add a new type of code attribute called soil. Okay. And I need to, as any code attribute, you need to you need to link it to a code list. We don't have the soil code here, but I can go I can click here and now I can add a list of soil types. So if I do if I put here soil Soil. Okay, I can now import. You could you could do it one by one like I did for the land use and add all the soil types, or you can also import a soil types uh, CSV file. So I'm going to import. I already created a soil type uh, CSV file. Sorry, uh, here this is the soil types with two attributes on the sorry with two columns on the CSV. One is the soil code and another one is the soil label. So for each one of the codes, there is a label. Okay, so I'm just going to import. Instead of writing manually, I'm going to import this CSV. Right click and import. I'm going to select a file, and I'm going to select this soil type CSV file, and I click on start import. Okay, and now I see here all the soil types that are present on the soil map. Apply. Save. Now, if I click here in preview, look, now it's asking me the, the role. It will ask the user when he clicks on a plot, not only to assess what is the forest type, but what is the soil type. But the soil type we don't want to assess, we want to include it from a map. In order to do that, we need to go to this special collector uh, option, where we say that the soil it's not actually something that we collect, but it's something that comes from the CSV. It means from the grid. Okay? And can also put it here that, that it should be included in the header. So now, if I save this, the soil is no more a question, but it's a statement here. When I click on a plot, I will be able to see what is the soil type of the plot. Okay? Save. 
So what does that mean? It means that the grid that I use for this survey needs to include this soil. If you need to, sorry, this, this soil type. If you want to know how the grid needs to be shaped for, for this survey to work, you can go here to these advanced um, features, click, click on Export Collect Earth Grid Template, Okay, and here is going to tell you what is the expected uh, format of the grid that this survey that we have created should have. Since we remove the elevation, the slope, and an aspect uh, attributes, these are not included on the on the on the CSV. But we added the soil attribute, and this is now included also in this in this CSV template. Which means that now we need to include the same the soil type to the grid that we have for Spain. So if I go to Quantum G's and I have my grid of Spain, as again, you just look at the regular points uh, attribute table. You see that we have the ID, the Y coordinate, and the X coordinate, and I need to add this other information from the digital soil map. So you go to there is a plugin within uh, QGIS called Point Sampling Tool, so you need to install that plugin. Okay. Once you install it, you can go there to the Point Sampling Tool, and you see that you want to add to the regular points um, vector file. We want to add this information, so we want to extract from that point, from those points, the oops, the ID. Uh, y coordinate and x coordinate. Okay, and we need to add the dominate, dominating soil type on the fields. Okay, I think it's fine. Okay, fine. And I click OK. Ah, sorry. So I can put it. Notes here. Can save it as a CSV file, and I call it Spain or Iberia. Iberia grid. Click save. Click OK. Must have the same coordinate. Okay, there is an error here, but we'll assume that this will work fine. This probably will need to fix it in QGIS, but this will take a little while. So why don't we do it in this tutorial? I close this and now if I go to open attribute table oops it didn't work yes it did work so I guess there are some points on the C so those points on the C don't have of course they don't have a soil type alright so now for each one of the plots you see the ID the position at the longitude and the dominated soil type that they belong to now I can Basically, I could go to here, I could open this grid. Okay, open. Maybe I can eliminate the plots that are on the C, just a second. Uh -huh. And now I have a grid of plots over Spain separated by half a degree. For each of them, I know what is the, the dominating soil type. And now we'll save this file. Save us. Grid. Let's call it two. Save. Okay. And now I can go in Collect Earth. And you know, in, coll in Collect Earth, you can set up. Uh, attach files to a um, to a survey. That means that you can add the grid directly to the survey. So I can click on this Add button, and I can say that I want to add this new grid that we created, the Iberia Grid 2. Oops, just let me fix one thing. Because here, the names y coordinate 
and X coordinate. So that's fine now. Uh, I click on open, I click on apply. Ah, oh, well, I didn't save it. Just a second. Okay, so now, well, sorry again, and we need to have the names exactly the same. The names needs to be exactly the same than the than is expected. So this will be soil. Oops, soil. Let's see why it's not saving correctly. Save us. Let's save us. Remote grid. Final, save, okay. um, now, I doesn't complain anymore, I can delete this one. All right, so now I have my grid, my survey, where I will be collecting the land use, the land use for each one of the plots, and where the user also should have this information about what what is the soil type that um, the plot belongs to, and that should be a, a you should be able to see that while collecting the data and also for in the analysis phase. I just check that. If I now go to export, and I export the collector survey, let's confirm that this is just a warning. I'm going to open the collector project that is generated by collect. Oops. Uh, now I have my plots in Spain. And I can go, well, you don't see them very well, but here are the plots. I can go plot by plot. And when I click on a plot, I should have the question here for what is the land use type for a scrub plan, this crop plan. And here you see that the soil type of the plot, according to the map that we that we fed to the grid, is the BC. I don't know what is BC, but let's click next. Now uh, and then I click on this one too. Other well, this is also crop plan. Then okay. Let's just click somewhere else, so we have a different uh, soil type. Okay, let's say this is forest, forest, same. Okay, so you see for each one of the plots, we have the expected soil type of the plot, and this is a settlement, same. So now finally, just to show you, if I click on Tools, Start Psychoanalysis, I'm going to be able to see here as well on the on the analysis phase, I'm going to be able to see the soil types that the plots belong to. Of course, this is a very simple survey. We have surveys that are way way well, most of our surveys are more complicated than this, but we have surveys where, where we are including data from shape files. Also, you can include data from a raster file. So you can include a, a well. There is no limit to the number of of attributes you can add. Uh, you al always have to remember that when you want to add an attribute that that you want this attribute to come from a raster or from a shape file, you have to go on to do all this process of the point sampling and very important that you have to specify here in the attribute that this is not a normal attribute but this is a collector type of attribute that comes from the CSV. Then you can also choose if you want to show it or not. You will show it on the on the collection phase, like here, we saw the saw the soil, or if you just unclick that, then the user doesn't see it. I mean, it depends. If you have a lot of attributes that come from the CSV, maybe you don't want to show all of them. Just finally, now, uh, Saiku has finally opened. This is Saiku. If I go to the plot, and I just make a uh, analysis here of the land use by soil type, 
we have here that for those plots that, that we have uh, collected, we have the land use and the type of soil that they belong to according to the, to the soil map. So I hope this video has uh, been helpful. Again, we have all of all of this information is uh, is also available through the Open Forest Support Forum. And just uh, otherwise, if it's too difficult, uh, let us know, and we'll try to we'll try to help you to to add this kind of information coming from from maps into your grids. Okay, bye bye.